My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil and Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled, The Three Ways Artificial Intelligence Will Impact Oil and Gas. A journalist contacted me recently to ask my perspectives on how AI would impact oil and gas. Here's broadly what I sent back. A discussion of artificial intelligence must begin with a definition of AI. My definition is that AI is a computerized capability to execute work requiring cognitive skills that are normally associated with humans. Examples include natural language processing, translation of languages, visual perception, auditory interpretation, and tool creation. Basically, AI superpower is the ability to ingest massive amounts of data in whatever form or source it originates, interpret that data, and take some action. Other senses, such as touch and taste, and the interpretation of things like emotional state, are also being worked on by the AI industry. But the common ingredient is data, mountains and mountains of it. What we declare to be AI will therefore be a work in progress for some time. But trend lines suggest that we will continue to advance computing to process those other cognitive skills, and we will continue to be surprised at the level of cognitive processing in species other than humans. Meanwhile, AI is already having three pretty dramatic impacts on oil and gas. First in the upstream, AI is being applied to subsurface data, and through better interpretation of that enormous trove, petroleum engineers are confidently expanding the amount of oil and gas that is recoverable. Second, AI is is helping to reduce demand for fossil fuels by transforming transportation markets. And finally, AI is reducing costs and improving productivity throughout production, midstream, and downstream. And when managers combine AI with other digital technologies, opportunities for the industry are even greater, and I can even see the potential for entirely new business models to emerge. But certainly the biggest game for AI in the upstream is through interpreting and analyzing available subsurface data modeling that data, and improving recovery rates from resources. Shale wells enter into a swift decline quite quickly in the life of the well, perhaps three years after initial production. And conventional wells generally have a much shallower decline curve, and the amount of recovered product is much greater. By shifting the decline curve for shale to more closely match that of conventional wells, basically lengthening the curve and increasing the volume of output, Petroleum engineers will add 5% to global reserves, or about 500 billion barrels of oil equivalent. This is primarily a math problem to understand and model out permeability and porosity, and to use that insight to frack shale and oil and gas wells differently, a job for which artificial intelligence is well suited. The prize is substantial. About 90% of the resource in a conventional gas well is recovered, about 40% in a typical conventional oil well, but for shale, recoveries are 20% or less. A 5% increase in total reserves is therefore about $20 trillion in value. Shale is primarily a North American phenomenon, so this wealth will accrue principally to the U.S., who have the shale resource, a hotly competitive and well-developed services industry, cloud computing companies, data scientists, and so forth. Many countries have exceptional and similar shale resources, but lag the U.S. in all of these additional attributes. In a competitive world, this incremental resource, if its cost is lower, will displace other higher-cost resources from the market, and of course, if supply expands, then price will decline, all things being equal. AI needs a lot of data to work properly, and there's lots of data accumulated over the years from conventional oil and gas production. That data could be fed into AI engines to enhance existing production or to extend the life of existing wells. Older wells with low levels of productivity could be brought back to life via AI. And there are now data service companies popping up that offer this as a service. The second big impact from artificial intelligence is looming, but is not yet manifest. As transportation technologies evolve, the demand for fuel may be dramatically impacted. I say may because no one can predict with certainty what will happen as society adopts more connected, autonomous, shared, and electric cars and trucks, or CASE for short. Car and truck manufacturers all around the world are all rapidly converting their manufacturing supply lines to produce these new transportation technologies. 
Case vehicles, particularly the autonomous varieties, are dependent on artificial intelligence engines to interpret all of that mobility data generated by onboard cameras and sensors. Until transportation shifts fully to electric, demand for fuel could go up if everyone abandons buses in favor of Uber. But for service companies in logistics and freight transportation, carbon is a big concern. Companies in these sectors will be highly motivated to remove carbon from their business models, driven by tax policies now in force in Canada, for example, or by outright bans that are coming to big cities in Europe, in which case demand could decline. So far, companies who have implemented AI-enabled trucks and haulers report fuel savings as the trucks run optimally all the time. I raise this issue of demand destruction because the industry doesn't often recognize that AI is both expanding and destroying the business at the same time. The issue for oil and gas is what to do with all of their infrastructure dedicated to the challenge of distributing petroleum products in a market-facing decline. Some oil companies now acknowledge that their retail businesses are effectively obsolete as a business model. In the rest of the oil and gas value chain, AI is being deployed primarily to augment human decision-making rather than to displace humans, and in ways that help optimize asset execution and predict asset performance. There are some counterexamples, but that's how I see it. For example, Woodside uses IBM Watson, a suite of tools that comprise IBM's AI offering, in a number of areas, and there are several YouTube videos on their progress. My favorite is how they use Watson to work with the engineering team to catalog all of the previous engineering studies and documents about their enormous gas project off the coast of Western Australia. The engineers can then ask Watson in natural language anything they want, and Watson instantly and correctly interprets the question and presents the findings. Woodside estimated that their engineers used to spend up to 40% of their time just finding the previous studies. In Calgary, Plains Midstream also uses IBM Watson to optimize their midstream business, i.e. raising the productivity of their assets and reducing their costs. Crooks OCM, an AI startup, uses a 10-minute look-ahead prediction based on analytics to implement automated pipeline commands on behalf of overworked control room operators to increase the efficiency of pipeline assets. Stream Systems uses AI to model complex network assets like pipelines and tank farms in the cloud, creating a digital twin of the asset to help the owners optimize the network. NAL uses AI to interpret land contracts to pull out the contractual terms that are the basis of royalty calculations. And a large oil sands company uses AI to help it understand its oil reservoirs and plan out better extraction techniques related to steam injection and the interface between different producing wells. I see all of these examples, except NAL, as first-order use cases, deploying AI on its own to help with complex analytic tasks and to support humans in that regard. As I've sketched out, AI by itself delivers clear benefits, i.e. helping interpret massive data sets, for instance. But in combination with other technologies, AI unlocks much more value. For example, a pump armed with sensors generates a lot of data. But with AI, that pump could interpret the data and take action, independently of a human operator. This is really important. Air conditioners respond to heat measurement, but not price signals. But an AI engine added to an aircon unit could switch on and off based on temperature and the price of power, or to switch between power suppliers. The case with NAL is particularly illustrative. An AI engine reads the complex JV contracts, pulls out the terms that defines the royalty calculation, feeds the results into a robotic process automation tool that converts the terms into code, and that code becomes a smart contract on blockchain. The best human performance at this task, that is, read the contract, calculate the royalty, produce the payment, is about 800 seconds per royalty contract, end-to-end, -end, a pace that, by the way, is largely unsustainable. AI, RPA, and blockchain does this in seconds, fault-free. Together, they reduce accounts payable costs, eliminate disputes between royalty partners, and reduce the stress of some 50 specialized resources. It's estimated that the worldwide installed base of sensors today is 8 billion units, rising to between 20 and 50 over the next five years or so, in the rush to add Internet-enabled capability to things, the so-called Internet of Things revolution. These devices will generate so much data that the only way to handle and interpret it all is via artificial intelligence. There should therefore be significant demand for AI, data science, and other related skills across many industries, not just in oil and gas. 
Most worryingly for oil and gas executives, AI is unlocking new business models, which could be very disruptive. The sheer analytic horsepower from cloud computing now rivals the best in-house compute data centers in the largest oil and gas companies and is available to anyone on a variety of economic models. Cloud computing can be rented, AI algorithms are available in a short-term use, whereas data centers, in-house data centers, are largely fixed-cost assets. Smaller firms may be able to create the massive kinds of data sets that benefit from AI by aggregating data from multiple companies using cloud computing. Sophisticated AI interpretation capabilities, which would otherwise be inaccessible, are now in reach. AI is therefore one of the hottest digital technologies, and it will be hot for many years to come. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.